Even if you aren't an avid gamer, chances are you've at least heard of Warcraft, one of the most successful video game franchises of all time. And even if you haven't been following its development, you're more than likely have seen a trailer for the live action movie based on said franchise that shows a bunch of normal dudes clad in shiny armor fighting a bunch of large green dudes in less shiny armor. I know, it looks epic, right? But as someone unfamiliar with the games, you may not have the full backstory as to why the film is so highly anticipated. I'm Alan with Cinematica and we've compiled a list of 10 things everyone should know before watching Warcraft. Number 1. It was announced 10 years ago, way back on May 9th, 2006, in a world still shell-shocked by Blizzard Entertainment's mega-hit of a video game, World of Warcraft, the company announced its partnership with production studio Legendary Pictures to develop a live-action take on the Warcraft universe. Blizzard's chief operating officer at the time, Paul Sams, said they were looking for a studio for quite some time before meeting with Legendary, whom had recently released Batman Begins and Superman Returns. Sam said he felt Legendary was the perfect partner due to their shared interest and standards for creative development. Legendary Pictures CEO Thaman Toll also commented on the pairing, saying the Warcraft universe is possessed of such a rich mythology and as such serves as an ideal platform as we go about translating that universe into what we intend to be a major event film. This announcement spawned a wave of hype. Fans rejoiced at the prospect of a two or more hour long Warcraft cinematic. Little did they know they'd be waiting for a decade as development of the film was postponed time and time again for one reason or another. Number 2. Development Limbo Warcraft has been in development for what feels like an eternity. The following year after the announcement, Blizzard and Legendary revealed that they planned to release Warcraft in 2009. However, by the time 2009 rolled around, they had only just announced that the man behind Spider-Man and the Evil Dead, Sam Raimi, would be directing the film. In an interview, Raimi said that he wants to be really faithful to the game, to the Horde and the Alliance and the mythology, and that writer Robert Rodat would craft an original story within that world that feels like a World of Warcraft adventure. But obviously this version of the film wasn't going to happen in 2009. Instead, it was pushed back until 2011. 2010 rolled around and not much had been said about the film. However, according to the companies, it was still going to happen. And it was announced that Blizzard and Legendary had to move forward without Raimi as he was busy with other projects. With this, and some supposed story issues, Activision Blizzard president Bobby Kotick made a statement saying, if it's important to Blizzard, it's important to me. And that the film was still in the world. Works. Later that year, Legendary hired Charles Leavitt to work on the screenplay, but at the time, the director's chair was still up for grabs. By 2013, things seemed to be heading in a much better direction. A new director had climbed to the top of Warcraft's directorial throne, we got our first teaser, and we were told the film would start filming in 2014, and that Warcraft would be in theaters come December 18th, 2015. Most of that was even true. On January 13th, 2014, Warcraft finally began its 123-day filming process, but unfortunately, due to several circumstances, including not wanting to compete with a little movie called Star Wars The Force Awakens, its release was delayed one final time with its new release date of June 10th, 2016. Number 3. Duncan Jones directed the film On January 30th, 2013, Duncan Jones, son of the late David Bowie, was announced as Warcraft's new and final director. Jones is a relatively new face to Hollywood, but has made a bit of a name for himself with his sci-fi works Moon and Source Code, which were met with a positive response from critics scoring high 80s and low 90s on Rotten Tomatoes. Despite Warcraft being his first massive summer blockbuster with huge stakes, Jones isn't worried. He and his team know they've made something that will distinguish itself within the fantasy genre. Pulling from Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings and HBO's Game of Thrones, Warcraft is going to stand its ground. Having grown up with video games, and at one point being an avid World of Warcraft player himself, Jones knows what makes the franchise unique, and that's the blurring of good versus evil. There isn't necessarily a fine line, and Jones feels he's captured that by having a ranging cast on both the human and orc side of the story. Expect to feel conflicted opinions about either faction as the plot thickens. Number 4. Chris Metzen of Blizzard worked on the story. If you aren't a fan of the games, then you may not have heard of Chris Metzen, but the fact that he had a hand in developing the story is a good thing. Metzen has been working with Warcraft since its inception in the early 90s, so he knows what it takes to do the story justice. What this means as a viewer is that you should expect Warcraft to accurately represent the world in which it's based. If you aren't familiar with the Warcraft universe, it'll seem vital vibrant and full of life, and if you are a fan, you should feel familiar with all of its intricacies. During BlizzCon 2015, Metzen, along with a lot of the other cast and crew members, sat down for a panel about the film. During this, Metzen admitted that he and the rest of Blizzard knew they were taking a risk with this movie, and that it wasn't a very obvious choice, but the idea of expanding the game's story beyond the computer screen seemed too cool to pass up. With that in mind, he knew the story was of utmost importance, and he felt the team and Duncan Jones did a great job converting the game's lore into something that works 
works well on the silver screen. Number 5. Internationally known as Warcraft The Beginning It's important to remember that whether you're a fan of the franchise or not, Warcraft is going to have some origin story aspects to it. I know, I know, we've had a lot of origin stories recently, but it's pretty much a necessity for a story of Warcraft's magnitude. At BlizzCon 2007, Blizzard talked of their plans for the film's plot that have been too similar to Lord of the Rings. As someone who has played the games, I'm not entirely sure how they thought that, but to address this issue, they decided to incorporate more plot points from the times right before World of Warcraft, which makes sense because that era has a lot of big names and fantastic stories. However, what this means for viewers is that there's going to be a lot of setting up. Not only should you expect to be shown how and why the orcs and humans became interlocked in seemingly endless war, but you'll also be brought along certain characters' beginnings, specifically Khadgar, a human mage who plays a very significant role in fighting the orcs, Garona, who believes she's half orc, half human, and Durotan, the leader of an exiled orc tribe whose son will later become a major player in Alliance Horde politics. Number 6. The film had a budget of over $100 million. Nowadays, a film's budget seems to have nothing to do with how well a movie does or even how good it is. Some movies that had double or even triple the budget of Warcraft have been miserable at best. Looking at you, Spider-Man 3, Green Lantern, and Battleship, though there are exceptions of course. There have been many great films in the past few years with budgets around that same $100 million mark, such as Jurassic World, Mad Max Fury Road, and The Martian. And heck, Deadpool only cost about $58 million to make, and look how well that did. Number 7. Not everything is CGI, but there's a lot. From your first glimpse at the trailer, you can see that Warcraft is going to have quite a bit of CGI in it. Duncan Jones described the amount as somewhere between The Lord of the Rings and Avatar, but my guess is probably a bit closer to the latter. Now, you may be thinking, wait up, how are they going to pull that off with such a mid-range budget? Avatar had over $200 million to work with. Well, guess what? Blizzard and Legendary managed to get Industrial Light and Magic to work on Warcraft special effects. If you don't know ILM, well, where the heck have you been for starters? ILM was founded by the one and only George Lucas and has been working on visual effects for films since Star Wars and has been dabbling in Hollywood's biggest hits ever since, including most of your beloved Marvel movies. So, despite the fact that the significant amount of comments are saying otherwise, Warcraft's orcs, epic battle scenes, and stunning digital vistas are going to look magnificent. Number 8. The cast has a lot of fresh blood. Warcraft isn't going to have much if any star power to speak of. In fact, some of its leading roles have been given to actors whose entire filmographies you could count with two hands, but that's not saying they won't do well. In fact, it's quite the opposite, as a lot of the actors that have been cast make sense when you look at the work they've done in the past, no matter how little there may be. Well, we'll start on the human side. Travis Fimmel, who plays Rengar in the show Vikings, takes on the role of Andu and Lothar, both badass warriors. Ben Foster, who was Angel in X-Men The Last Stand, is now playing Medivh, both of which end up corrupt. Then there's Dominic Cooper, who is Howard Stark in Captain America the First Avenger and is now King Lane Rin, both of whom sit on top in Empire. With the orcs being CG characters, chances are you wouldn't recognize the actors to begin with, but their voices are a different story. Toby Kebbell, who voiced Koba in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, voices Duraton, both rebels against their people, though for entirely different reasons. Clancy Brown voices Mr. Krabs from SpongeBob SquarePants and now takes on Black Hand. Robert Kaczynski, who played Chuck Hansen in Pacific Rim, is voicing Orgrim, another badass fighter. And then there's Daniel Wu, aka Sonny from Into the Badlands, as Gul'dan, both of whom are very intelligent and very skilled at what they do. Oh, and then there's Paula Patton, who is in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, plays the hybrid non-CG orc Garona. Number 9. Warcraft isn't just for hardcore fans of the game. Of course, Warcraft is being made because the series has had immense financial success over the years and built up a fan base of millions for Blizzard Entertainment. But the company is also looking to make a film that even Warcraft virgins can get into. Duncan Jones explained in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that one of the reasons it took so long to get the film rolling was the extreme caution Blizzard had with creating something accessible by everyone. In one last comparison to Lord of the Rings, Joan says the making of Warcraft was similar to the position Peter Jackson found himself in when he was making The Fellowship of the Ring. There's always going to be a hardcore fan base, he said. That was going to take him to task if he didn't address things in a way that stayed true to the spirit of Tolkien's work. We have the same passion amongst our fans, so it was a similar job. Warcraft aims to be a balancing act in this sense, one that makes fans feel at home and also welcomes newcomers at the door. Number 10. Warcraft will break the video game movie curse. Let's face the facts. There have been a lot of attempts at movies based on video games in the past, and for one reason or another, they all turn out atrocious. In most cases, their only saving grace is the fact that you can laugh at how terrible they are. Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Double Dragon, Super Mario Brothers. Well, 2016 is looking to put a stop to that with not only Warcraft, but also Assassin's Creed.
Creed. Duncan Jones made an astute point that not long ago, that same curse was associated with comic book movies, and now they're some of the largest grossing hits every year. It took a generation of filmmakers who loved and were raised on comic books to make movies that you actually cared and felt something for, he said. Jones actually grew up an avid gamer, starting out with an Atari, and now he's tapping into that passion as a filmmaker to create a narrative that will grab hold of viewers' interest and tap into their empathy using the World of Warcraft as source material. Thanks for watching the 10 things to know before watching Warcraft. Do you plan on seeing the movie? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to check out some of our other videos by clicking the annotations or links in the description. We have new videos dropping every week, so let us know what you want us to cover next. And if you like getting more from your movies and TV, subscribe to Cinematica, where we help you watch smarter.